the origins of phenomenalism trace back to early philosophical inquiries into the nature of perception and reality. The core idea of phenomenalism is that physical objects cannot be known to exist independently of our sensory experiences. This idea can be traced through various stages of philosophical development. Early philosophical thought, particularly from the pre-Socratic period, laid some groundwork for phenomenalist ideas. Philosophers such as Heraclitus and Parmenides explored questions about change and the nature of reality, though their conclusions were not yet articulated in terms of phenomenalism. Heraclitus emphasized the flux of experience, while Parmenides questioned the reality of change. John Locke, an influential figure in early modern philosophy, contributed significantly to the development of ideas related to phenomenalism. Locke argued that knowledge of the external world is derived from sensory experience. He posited that we can only have direct access to our own perceptions and ideas, not to the objects themselves. Locke's empiricism suggested that while physical objects exist, our knowledge of them is mediated by our sensory experiences. George Berkeley advanced this discussion further with his idealist philosophy. Berkeley argued that material objects do not exist independently of perception. According to Berkeley, to be is to be perceived as he es percipi. Uh, for him, the existence of objects is entirely dependent on their being perceived by a mind. Berkeley's philosophy emphasizes that what we know of the world consists of ideas in our minds, not independent material substances. In the 19th century, philosophers such as Auguste Comte and Ernst Mach refined ideas consistent with phenomenalism. Auguste Comte argued that knowledge should be based on observable phenomena. While not strictly a phenomenalist, his views reinforced the idea that sensory experience is crucial for knowledge. Ernst Mach examined the nature of sensations and their role in forming our understanding of reality. Mach's work emphasized that physical objects can be understood as bundles of sensations rather than as entities existing independently of experience. Key texts central to phenomenalism include Berkeley's E. A Treatise Concerning the Principles of Human Knowledge and Mach's The Analysis of Sensations. Berkeley's treatise outlines his idealist philosophy, providing a foundational argument for the notion that reality is fundamentally tied to perception. Mach's work investigates sensory experiences and their role in our knowledge of the world. Both texts are pivotal in understanding the progression of ideas leading to phenomenalism. Phenomenalism asserts that physical objects cannot be known to exist independently of sensory experiences. According to this view, physical objects do not exist as independent entities separate from our experiences. Instead, their existence is dependent on their being perceived or their potential to be perceived by a sentient being. The definition of phenomenalism revolves around the idea that the existence of physical objects is contingent upon sensory perception. According to this view, physical objects do not exist independently of perception. Their existence is dependent on their being perceived or their potential to be perceived by a sentient being. Phenomenalism contrasts with perceptual realism, which posits that physical objects exist independently of our perceptions. In contrast, phenomenalism denies that we can have direct knowledge of objects existing outside of our sensory experience. While perceptual realism holds that physical objects persist in their existence regardless of whether they are being perceived, phenomenalism maintains that the concept of physical objects is fundamentally linked to our experiences of them. The role of sensory experience in phenomenalism is crucial. The theory suggests that sensory experiences, such as seeing, hearing, or touching, are the primary means through which we gain knowledge about the world. According to phenomenalism, the reality of physical objects is not something that can be known apart from the experiences we have of them. Instead, discussions about physical objects are effectively discussions about sensory experiences or the conditions under which these experiences occur. Phenomenalism's implications affect both metaphysics and epistemology. In metaphysics, phenomenalism challenges the notion of an objective reality that exists independently of perception. It implies that what we refer to as physical objects are constructs of sensory experiences rather than independently existing entities. In epistemology, phenomenalism suggests that knowledge is limited to the scope of sensory experiences. It raises questions about how we can claim knowledge of objects if their existence is tied to perception. 
This limitation extends to understanding object permanence, as phenomenalism posits that objects only exist insofar as they are being perceived or are capable of being perceived. Support for phenomenalism is based on several key arguments. One argument is that phenomenalism aligns with empiricism, which holds that knowledge is derived from sensory experience. According to phenomenalists, since all knowledge of physical objects is mediated through sensory experience, it follows that statements about physical objects can be reduced to statements about sensory experiences. This reduction provides a coherent account of how we know about objects without needing to posit their independent existence. Phenomenalism also responds to skepticism about the external world. Skeptics argue that we cannot know if the external world exists independently of our perceptions. Phenomenalism addresses this by suggesting that the concept of an external world is unnecessary. Instead of requiring an external world that exists independently of perception, phenomenalism maintains that discussions about objects can be fully accounted for by referring to the sensory experiences themselves. This approach sidesteps some of the problems posed by skepticism by focusing on the conditions and nature of perception rather than the existence of an external reality. Criticisms of phenomenalism often come from proponents of realism, who argue that phenomenalism fails to account for the persistence and continuity of objects. Realists maintain that physical objects have an existence that does not depend on being perceived. They argue that phenomenalism cannot adequately explain how objects continue to exist and maintain their properties when they are not being perceived. For example, if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, realism would assert that the tree still exists and makes a sound, while phenomenalism would struggle to account for the tree's existence in the absence of perception. In response to these criticisms, phenomenalists offer several defenses. One defense is that phenomenalism can account for object permanence through the concept of potential perception. Phenomenalists argue that objects are defined by their ability to be perceived under certain conditions, even if they are not currently being perceived. Thus, the continuity and persistence of objects can be understood in terms of their potential to be perceived, rather than their actual perception at any given moment. Another response involves refining the theory to address the problem of object permanence. Some phenomenalists propose that the theory can be adapted to include statements about the conditions under which objects are typically perceived. This adaptation allows for a more nuanced account of how objects can be said to persist even when they are not immediately perceived, by focusing on the regularities and patterns in sensory experiences. Modern adaptations of phenomenalism also involve engaging with contemporary developments in philosophy and science. Some philosophers have integrated phenomenalist ideas with advancements in cognitive science and quantum mechanics. These adaptations seek to address the challenges posed by realism and skepticism while incorporating new insights into the nature of perception and reality. For example, discussions in cognitive science about how the brain processes sensory information and constructs our experience of objects can provide additional support for phenomenalist views by highlighting the role of sensory experience in shaping our understanding of reality. In cognitive science, phenomenalism influences discussions about perception and consciousness. Cognitive science examines how the brain processes sensory information and how this processing shapes our experience of reality. Phenomenalism's focus on sensory experience aligns with cognitive science's emphasis on how sensory input is crucial for constructing our understanding of the world. Research in cognitive science supports the idea that our knowledge of physical objects is mediated by sensory experiences, reinforcing the phenomenalist view that objects are defined by our sensory interactions with them. In quantum mechanics, phenomenalism resonates with certain interpretations of the theory. Quantum mechanics deals with the behavior of particles at the quantum level, where the role of the observer appears to influence the state of the system. Some interpretations of quantum mechanics, such as the Copenhagen interpretation, suggest that the properties of quantum systems are not determined until they are observed. This idea parallels phenomenalism, which posits that the existence and properties of objects are tied to their perception. Quantum mechanics thus provides a scientific framework where the act of measurement and observation plays a crucial role, similar to how phenomenalism views objects as dependent on sensory experiences. 
Contemporary philosophical critiques of phenomenalism address its limitations in light of modern advancements. One critique is that phenomenalism may struggle to account for the objectivity and consistency of scientific knowledge. Critics argue that the theory does not adequately explain how scientific theories and observations can be consistently applied and validated across different contexts if they are solely based on sensory experiences. This critique points to a potential gap in phenomenalism regarding its ability to account for the objective validity of scientific knowledge. Another critique involves the challenge of explaining the persistence and identity of objects over time. Phenomenalism's reliance on sensory experience raises questions about how objects can be said to persist or have an identity when they are not being perceived. Critics argue that the theory needs a more robust account of object permanence and identity to address these issues. Future research in philosophy and science may explore ways to address these critiques and refine the theory. Philosophers may seek to develop modified versions of phenomenalism that incorporate insights from cognitive science and quantum mechanics, addressing the challenges related to scientific knowledge and object persistence. Additionally, interdisciplinary research could provide new perspectives on how sensory experiences and physical objects interact, potentially leading to further developments in the understanding of phenomenalism. Overall, phenomenalism remains relevant in contemporary discussions about perception and reality. Its application in cognitive science highlights the role of sensory experience in constructing knowledge, while its connection to quantum mechanics underscores the interplay between observation and reality. Ongoing critiques and research aim to address the limitations of phenomenalism and explore its implications in light of new scientific and philosophical developments,